This video will demonstrate key considerations to assist teachers when reporting on students with special needs. Key principles linking education and learning for all with growing success will help guide us in using the comment framework to report student achievement. With the implementation of Growing Success in 2010, teachers were provided with direction on creating personalized comments for students on the Provincial Report Card. Growing Success states, in writing anecdotal comments, teachers should focus on what students have learned, describe significant strengths, and identify next steps for improvement. In addition, it says, the comments should describe in overall terms what students know and can do and should provide parents with personalized, clear, precise and meaningful feedback. The question becomes, how do we fill this space in a professional manner that follows the direction from the ministry to meet the needs of students and parents? The comment framework developed from Growing Success 2010 assists teachers in composing personalized comments on report cards. A further question becomes, how can we fill this space when we consider a student with special learning needs? The comment framework provides a common process for creating comments that reflect the intent of growing success. There are three components in this framework. Write key learning with qualifiers and descriptors developed from a cluster of expectations which focuses on what students have learned. Share specific examples that demonstrate learning by describing significant strengths of the student's work. Communicate next steps to students and parents that will identify strategies for improvement. We begin by considering each student's needs. When we consider the grade-specific curriculum expectations for this student, the first question becomes, are these appropriate? If yes, then general classroom assessment and reporting practices apply. When we determine that the grade-specific curriculum expectations are not appropriate, then the student will require accommodations and or modifications. The question now becomes, what is needed for this student? It may be determined that only accommodations are necessary for this student. Growing success clearly defines accommodations as enabling a student to learn and to demonstrate learning. If this is the case, the provincial curriculum expectations for the grade are not altered for a student receiving accommodations. And again, assessment, evaluation, and reporting remains consistent with general classroom practices. It may be determined instead that modifications are necessary for this student. According to growing success, modifications involve changes made to the grade level expectations for a subject. At the secondary level, a credit may or may not be granted for a course depending on the extent of the changes to curriculum. The key difference here is that the provincial curriculum expectations are altered. It is important to mention that we still use the achievement chart as the basis for our assessment and evaluation. However, we still need to provide a comment that focuses on what the student has learned, describes their strengths, and identifies next steps for improvement. We also check the IEP box and include the specific IEP statement that is found in Growing Success. For students at the elementary level with modified curriculum expectations stated on their IEP, we are to check the IEP box for that particular subject and then include the necessary IEP statement. We customize the statement using either letter grade or percentage mark include the student's current grade placement, as well as provide information on whether there was an increase or decrease in the number and or complexity of expectations. For students at the secondary level with modified curriculum expectations stated on their IEP, 
The IEP box is checked and this statement is included in the comment box. We will build a comment by first considering the IEP, the curriculum expectations we previously chose, the learning goals and success criteria using the comment framework. The basis for our comment is the IEP that was developed for this particular student by the school-based team. From the IEP, we identify the curriculum expectations that we previously selected and have been working on this term with this student. The expectations form an IEP-based learning goal. I am learning to gather information about a personal life event and organize and write a one-paragraph autobiography. We align the IEP-based learning goal with the whole class learning goal, but personalize it to meet this individual student's learning needs. Success criteria is developed in student-friendly language based on this learning goal. To write the first part of the comment, we take this student's IEP-based learning goal as the basis of their key learning. Then, we identify specific criteria with examples that demonstrate this student's learning. Finally, we share next steps for this student that are based on the criteria not yet met. So for the comment, we begin with the IEP statement that has been customized to reflect this student's IEP. The comment goes on to include Sarah's key learning, her strengths with specific examples, and clear and attainable next steps. In a well-developed personalized comment, students will see themselves and parents will recognize their child. This process, using the comment framework, included the key principles linking education and learning for all with growing success in order to report achievement for a student with special learning needs. This comment provides personalized, clear, precise, and meaningful feedback for this student. Additional resources, including a copy of the comment framework and examples of specific comments for various divisions can be found at ae.misalondon.ca.